Hi, everyone. My name is Charlie Coster. Uh, this talk is called uh, AI Doesn't Have to Be Hard, uh, But It Can Be Fun. Um, so if you, if you look at me on the internet, I'm ccoster22 on various platforms, GitHub, Medium, that sort of thing. Um, now, for this talk, AI can be really int intimidating. Uh, you might think you have to know calculus and math and so on. You really don't, especially with these two topics. So Markov changes to genetic algorithms. For this, so for this talk, what I'm going to do is explain what these two topics are and try and have some, some fun examples and uh, interact with you guys a little bit. Uh, so the first one is, a, is Markov chains. So what is a Markov chain? Uh, a Markov chain is not terribly difficult to understand. This is a Markov chain. A Markov chain is essentially a state machine where given that, that you're on a present state, your next state is determined by probability. So if I'm on state A, let's say there's a 10% chance that my next state is A, and a 50% chance that my next state is B, and a 40% chance that, that my next state is C. And then I go to the next state, and again, uh, there's a probability of moving on to the next state. So if you happen to be a developer and you know how to create nodes and edges in code, you know how to create a Markov chain. Uh, what's really cool about Markov chains is you see this in your everyday life. If you pull out your phone and you open up the keyboard and you start uh, and you get the cursor in there, you will see where it says the, uh, I, and on. That is the result of a Markov chain that has gone through how you type into the keyboard and each node is a word that you've typed and each co connection to the next node is a probability that you're about to type that word instead of a different word. So that's, you have a Markov chain in your phone right now, and you use it every time you hit the autocorrect, which is really kind of neat. Um, the cool thing here is you don't actually have to uh, kind of feed this in as you go. You can seed this, this Markov chain with any text that you want. So for example, I've seeded a Markov chain that I wrote with the Declaration of Independence. And I can just generate uh, random uh, uh, phrases here. So that to cause others to the civil power, that sentence was generated by a Markov chain where I started at a random state and I just do math.random and, and follow that state machine. And it doesn't quite make sense, but it's, it's still kind of fun. Some of these should be pretty good. We therefore acquiesce in the head of these rights. Governments are endowed by repeated injury. <laughs> so it, it's completely nonsense, but it sounds kind of grammatically correct to some degree. I mean, you lose some context, but uh, I can tell you if I try to generate a really long sentence, It'd be, it'd be completely nonsensical. So it's, it's pretty good for like short snippets of, of text. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty fun. Uh, so I'm gonna see if I can get in a little bit of trouble here and play a little game show with you guys. Uh, that property of, you know, it's good for short snippets of text but doesn't really make too much sense. Um, that remind me, reminded me of a certain US president on a certain Twitter platform. Um, so I made a game show. Uh, and this, these are the rules of the game show. It's just, and I'm going to ask for volunteers in a minute here. Uh, I'm going to show tweets on the screen. And the tweets are going to be literally from the most powerful person in human history. Or they're going to be tweets from a very, barely comprehensible AI. Uh, so yeah, this will be fun. Uh, so I'm going to show six tweets. Does anyone want to be a volunteer to take a guess at the first six tweets? Come on. You. OK. I'll read them down. Uh, top to bottom, left to right, and then as quickly as you can on the second pass through, you tell me whether you think it's Trump or not Trump. Is the AI based upon? Yeah, I scraped his whole Twitter page and fed a, yeah, that, that, was, that, that sucked, but yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Very good talks, played golf today with bad intentions. I would like to wish everyone, including all haters and losers, of which sadly there are many, a truly happy and enjoyable mem Memorial Day. We'll be announcing my experience with Mexico and we win. Big Supreme Court decision on soybeans, Canada informing the massive tax cuts and many others. An extremely credible source has called me office and told me that Barack Obama's birth certificate is a fraud. And it would seem very hard to obstruct ju justice for a crime that never happened, witch hunt. So <laughs> playing golf with bad intentions, what do you think? Not Trump, Not Trump. okay. Uh, haters and losers, happy Memorial Day. Okay. We'll be announcing my experience with Mexico and we win, question mark. <laughs> uh, big sp Supreme Court decision on soybeans. And then birth certificate. Okay. And witch hunt. So here's the answers. So these three were AI. And these three 
we're Donald Trump. <laughs> so we're gonna do this one more time, and uh, yeah, so another volunteer. Come on, this is fun, yes. Okay, here we go. Clapper has my former FBI lovers have been held hostage for, from the smartest, toughest of the US. Des despite the negative, the constant negative press, cough fefe, was, was, was Obama too soft on innocent people? Iran's military budget is a man, Jimmy. I picked, <laughs> I, I picked someone to Washington, D.C. And sorry, losers and haters, but my, but my IQ is one of the highest, and you all know it. Please don't feel so stupid or insecure. It's not your fault. Okay, FBI lovers. Okay, Kafefe. Too soft on innocent people. Okay. Uh, Jimmy. <laughs> I picked someone to Washington, D.C. Okay, and losers and haters. All right, so here we go. These four were AI, and these two were Donald Trump. All right, so that's enough. That's enough fun with Donald Trump. Uh, so just real quickly, you could do more than make fun of Donald Trump with this. Um, for, <laughs> so for example, uh, you could, if you build a website, you could track how your customers kind of go through your website and navigate through it. And if you wanted to, after you've tracked that, feed it into a Markov chain and simulate how a customer goes through your website. You could compose a song uh, using mu music theory, machine learning, and various other things. Uh, so Markov chains, I believe, are not terribly hard, but it's very fun. So hopefully you guys have some ideas after this on how to use Markov chains. Okay, so, so for the second, the second part of this talk, I'll be talking about genetic algorithms, which again, I think is, it's kind of in, in the AI category, but definitely not hard, definitely don't need to know math, uh, and it's, it's pretty fun. Um, so real quick, I know this is an educated group of people, but a, I need to go over biological evolution because genetic algorithms are based on the process of evolution, basically. So I'll just spend just a minute uh, going over evolution. So up on the screen, I have the DNA of two organisms. And even though these two organisms are of the same species, you'll note here I've circled some of the genes are different. So this kind of manifests itself in the differences between you and I, hair color, height, uh, and so on. Now, if these two organisms were to breed, what really happens down at the, you know, the molecular level is the DNA from these two organisms unzips and recombines randomly in a process called crossover. So this is the DNA of, that ch of their child, and because the DNA randomly recombines, sometimes it takes a gene from mom, sometimes it takes a gene from dad, and that's why, generally speaking, you kind of look like your mom, kind of look like your dad. So we all know this, but I'm pointing this out specifically because uh, it's important for a genetic algorithm. Now, because this process isn't entirely perfect and there's this, like, this fireball in the sky hitting us with radiation all the time, sometimes there's mistakes, and this is called mutation. So sometimes that gene randomly changes to something else, and um, that, gene, that mutation can either be bad, in which case that would decrease the chances of that offspring reproducing and passing that gene along, or that mutation could be good, and it increases the chances that that mutation gets, gets sent along. So I know everyone pretty much knew that, um, but what a genetic algorithm is, is basically taking that and saying, you know what, what evolution is, is basically nature kind of naturally finding an optimal reproducing organism, and we could kind of shift that a little bit and say, I have this problem in computation where I'm trying to find an optimal way to solve it, but there's no real practical way, way to do that, and a genetic algorithm is a practical way to do that. So this is the actual algorithm that I'll describe. So imagine you wanted to evolve, for example, um, a better wing design for an aircraft based on weight and drag and, and, and cost and so on. Uh, it's kind of a complicated problem, but let's, let's imagine we're going to simulate that. Um, so step zero in a genetic algorithm is to just, in the computer, generate a whole bu bunch of different random wing designs. That, it doesn't matter that they're all terrible randomly. But the whole point is just to start off with an initial generation of, of organisms, where here the organism is a wing design. Step one is to go through uh, that randomly generated set of organisms, I'll just keep using that word, um, and just evaluate them. How, how good is that wing design? And just give it kind of a, an objective score. Uh, then we ask the question, are any, any of these wing designs good enough? 
on the first generation, likely that's not the case. Um, but if it was, then we're done. Uh, so that's our exit condition. Uh, but like I said, very likely on the first try, we're not done. So this is where we uh, mimic the process of biological evolution. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that whole generation of wing designs, and since we've already scored them, we're going to kill off and just throw away the, the worst of them, and take the best of them and basically breed them together. So what does that mean? We're gonna build a new generation of wing designs that have inherited traits from the previous generation. So the, the next generation kind of looks like the, the previous generation, but we're also gonna reach in there and kind of tweak some things to make sure uh, we get some variation. So uh, there's the mutation. And then we just go in this loop. Uh, we take the next generation, we score everything, we ask, are we done yet? Probably not. We do this hundreds and thousands of tens of thousands of times, and over time, because we are breeding the best individuals, we will naturally start evolving towards a better wing design uh, in the end there. So the example I'm gonna go over is not actually aircraft wing design, but it's actually a little bit more fun than that, I think. Uh, so here's a picture of Bugs Bunny smoking a cigarette, um, because it's fun. And I, my goal here is to evolve an image, uh, to replicate this image by basically throwing a bunch of circles at the screen. Uh, so these circles are gonna be different sizes, different colors, different levels of transparency, different positions on the screen, and there's a different number of circles. Um, again, this is entirely impractical, but the whole point here is to demonstrate how this works. So the genetic algorithm needs a few pieces of information in order to, to know how it works. So one piece of information is to know how do organisms breed. Here an organism is just a bunch of circles on the screen, so we need to define how, how if I had one organism here and another, another organism here, how do these two breed together? Well, a more useful question to ask is, if we look at the DNA for the first organism, and we look at the DNA for the second organism, now we ask, okay, how do we, how do we take these two DNA from these two parents and recombine them uh, into a child DNA? Um, the sort of naive way to do this is to, is to pick what's called a pivot point and say, everything before this point we get from one organism, everything after this point we get from another organism. And you can see that the first two come from the top, the last three come from the, the second one. And now we have created the DNA for a child organism, or it's a child image here, and this manifests itself as a new organism that has inherited traits from both of its parents. So not terribly complicated, and then hopefully, hopefully the animations help there, but this is how organisms, how images are, are gonna breed with each other. Okay, next piece of information the, the genetic algorithm needs. Uh, given that we have a, a child organism that's gonna go into the next generation, we need to figure out how a mutation works. Um, for this example, all I'm going to do is pick a random circle and randomly mutate one of its traits randomly. So, for example, I could pick that pink circle in front and mutate its X value, or I can mutate its Y value, or I can make it more opaque, or I could change its red, its green, and its blue values. Just, I, I'm just gonna pick one of these just to make a small mutation to, to that child. Um, I could also mutate its radius, uh, but also because the DNA is represented as just a collection of circles, I could also throw on a new circle, which is the kind of greenish one uh, on the top left image there. Uh, that's another form of mutation. So the genetic algorithm is randomly going to choose one of these forms of mutations uh, and apply it to uh, organisms in the next generation. Okay, so one more piece of information. We need to be able to tell the genetic algorithm how good the uh, the solution, the possible solution is. So how, how close are we to this image of Bugs Bunny? Well, if we just look at it like this and you give me a bunch of circles, that's kind of a hard question to answer, right? That, that kind of looks like a hat, that kind of looks like a face. We, we don't want to make this too hard on ourselves. So I'm going to simplify this a little bit and take the image of Bugs Bunny and look at it numerically. This is a collection of all the pixels, one by one, all whatever, 100,000 pixels, uh, of that image. So on the starting the top left, that first four tuple is the red, green, blue alpha values of pixel one, and pixel two, and pixel three, and so on. And we're gonna do the same thing with, this, with the, the possible solutions. So here's a possible solution to our problem. Again, I'm gonna start at the top pixel. In this case, the first row of pixels is, is all the same, but we're gonna do the same thing. And just pick off all those pixels, red, green, blue alpha values, so we have Bugs Bunny on the left, we have uh, our possible cir circle solution on the right, and then we're gonna go pixel by pixel and keep a running uh, difference. We're gonna sum up a running total of differences. So I'm gonna dip the red, the green, the blue, and the alpha values, and keep that in a running total. Do that with the second pixel, and do it with the third pixel, and just go down all the way through the list. 
Now, something to note here, this is gonna produce like a crazy huge number, like 80 million, which when you stop and think about it, that's like, okay, how does that get us anywhere? Well, the, the key insight here is because we are summing differences of numbers, if that number is further away from zero, that means it's a less optimal solution. And if that number is closer to zero, that means it's a more optimal solution. So that's all we really need to be able to evaluate how good a solution is. As the number gets closer to zero, it looks more and like, more and like the picture of Bugs Bunny. So note here, all we've done is we're going to tell the algorithm, here's how you breed, here's how you mutate, and here's how you tell you, uh, how good the, the possible solution is. We give it to the algorithm, we press go, and we let it run for 20 minutes because it's, it's just gonna keep going uh, by itself until we say it's good enough. So uh, here's a movie that's 20 seconds long. Keep your eye on the bottom image because it's gonna start evolving. So here we go. So the question was, is 20 minutes good for, uh, was that with a video card? It wasn't with a video card, it was with a MacBook Pro with an integrated graphics card. Um, so yeah, so I think that's kind of cool. I get really excited about this sort of thing. I keep hitting this, I should stop hitting that. Um, but yeah, so that went kind of quickly. I'm gonna play it again. Uh, but this time, now that we know what the algorithm is, try and notice the algorithm. Because what I'm doing here is I'm taking each successive generation and taking the best one and just putting a, a video frame and then just playing them all together. So try and notice the mutations and notice how we are basically following a line of descendants that objectively gets us closer to this image of Bugs Bunny. So here we go again. And I could honestly just stare at this all day because uh, <laughs> this is really cool. And it's almost like a picture coming into focus because that's the only way it could get even better is to add even more finer, fine detail uh, to this. So you'll notice it doesn't actually get perfect, but if you were to stand way back there and kind of squint your eyes, it's, it's, it's pretty good, so I, I'm really happy about that. Um, and the other thing to note on this is, remember, all we did to tell it, let me rephrase that, I didn't have to tell it what a hat looks like, what a Bugs Bunny looks like, what, I, I didn't have to teach it what entities are. I taught it how to, we taught it how to breed, how to mutate, and how to compare pixels. And we automatically got to a really cool solution. So uh, I think that's really neat, so hopefully you guys think that's, that's pretty neat too. Um, so that's what I had. We had, so we went over Markov chains, we went over genetic algorithms. Um, if you look up my handle on GitHub, I have a genetic algorithm implementation out on GitHub. Um, also this morning I tweeted the uh, Declaration of Independence Markov chain generator, uh, and also the Trump tweet one too. So if you look me up on Twitter, uh, you can go play with that. Uh, but with that, I wanna say thanks for your time.